Good morning, you guys. Um, this video is just a really quick review on how to compare and order fractions, which just means put them in order. Um, in this case, we're going to be putting them in order from least to greatest. Um, so these are actually problems from your math journal. This comes from page 373. So if you wanted to follow along with your book, um, or you wanted to check to see if you got these answers right, you can. But this is just an explanation on um, how I found these answers. So we're putting, like number five, we're going to put these three fractions in order from least to greatest. So I have one fourth, three sixths, and one eighth. And so my suggestion, first of all, is just to kind of think logically about these fractions. Um, if you look at them, for number five, one might kind of stand out to you. I notice right away that three over six, this middle fraction, is equal to one half. And when I compare that to one fourth and one eighth, those are both smaller than one half because when we're talking about fourth, two fourths would be half and eighths, four eighths would be half. So right away, I know that three sixths is the, the biggest or the greatest fraction in this list. And so now I just need to compare one fourth and one eighth. So you could go ahead and get on Schoology and you could compare using the digital fraction tiles um, and to see like a visual model of which one's bigger or smaller. Or the other strategy that we've really been focusing on is finding equivalent fractions with common denominators. So think about what a common denominator could be for um, four and eight. And if you can do that in your head, that's fabulous. If you're a little stuck, off to the side, just list out some multiples of four and eight. So remember, this is just from your multiplication chart, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 8 is 8, 16, 24. And so right away, I see a couple. I see 8, and um, 16 would also work as well. And actually, if we kept on listing, 24 could work too, since um, one eighth is already in eighths. I'm going to choose to use eight, so I only have to change one fraction. So if I want to change fourths to eighths, remember you have to figure out the puzzle, like what we're going to multiply by. So because four times two is equal to eight, we also do that to the numerator. It becomes two eighths. So now if you compare one eighth and two eighths, one eighth is the smallest fraction in the list. And then one fourth would be the middle fraction. And I put them in order from least to greatest. Okay, so when you're done with that, I'm gonna draw kind of like a little line here to separate. Go on to number six. This one has four, no big deal. Um, so look again and see what you notice about these fractions. Again though, I can see right away that if you think about your benchmark fraction of um, one half, that three tenths is the only fraction listed that's smaller than one half. So I know that three tenths is the smallest fraction here because one half would be five tenths. Okay, so now we need to compare three fifths, two thirds, and four fifths. Now, three fifths and four fifths would be pretty easy to compare now because they're both in fifths. I know that four fifths is bigger than three fifths, but I'm not quite sure where two thirds will fall. So let's go ahead and um, make some equivalent fractions. I think it's easiest to list them up and down like this. 
rather than going across your page. Okay, so find some multiples of five and three. If you think about this, three, six, nine, 12, 15. And I also know that if you list fives, you also get a multiple of 15. So I think that our common denominator will be 15. Although some, some people might find a different one. Like if you kept listing, you might find that 30 is another multiple. And so it doesn't matter what multiple you, you use as long as they all have it in common. Um, Okay, so down here, I know that 5 times 3 is 15, so I need to, oops, I need to do that to the top, so this would be 9 fifteenths. I know that 3 times 5 is 15, so I multiply on the top by 5, so 2 times 5 is 10. And then lastly, I know that 5 times 3 is 15, so on the top I'll do 4 times 3, which is 12. And actually, that's funny, they're in order going down. So the next smallest fraction in our list would be 3 fifths, then 2 thirds, and then 4 fifths. Alright, when you're ready, go ahead and uh, move on to the last one. Um, this one... You might notice that 7 twelfths and 5 twelfths, they both have a common denominator already. They're twelfths. And so you might see that you could turn 3 fourths into a denominator with twelfths because 12 is a multiple of 4. You could do times 3 to the numerator and the denominator. Um, and you would get 9 twelfths. Um, or you might have seen, just kind of comparing the fractions, when you think about twelfths, you know that 6 twelfths is equal to 1 half. So I know that 5 twelfths is smaller than 1 half. And if you consider the other two fractions, those are both over 1 half. So just by thinking about it kind of logically, you might see that 5 twelfths was the smallest one. Now, I already know that 7 twelfths comes next because I changed 3 fourths into twelfths as well. So the biggest fraction is going to be 9 twelfths. And if you didn't want to find equivalent fractions, remember the other option was to use the fraction tiles and create a model. Okay, so this has just been a really quick review of how to put fractions in order. Um, and you would use the same strategy if you were looking to find the biggest fraction. You would just compare them using the common denominator or by using our benchmark fraction and thinking about is it bigger or smaller than one half. So let me know if you guys need any help with this. Um, otherwise, I will see you later.